Good afternoon, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. This is part two, because in part one, as usual, night smooth thinking and banging on about hunter-gatherer, I lost my track. What was the point I was trying to make? I'm very thankful for the British Society for Sexual Medicine Guidelines, because they do give us a framework to work from, a safe and effective framework. There are things that need addressing and I have applied to be on the committee. I'm still awaiting a response. Hmm. Do they want me? A renegade, a maverick. Only time will tell. So it'd be very disappointing if we had to go by the local pathology reference range, which reflects the current society, which as we know is a sick society. How do we know that? Not only do we know of an increased incidence and prevalence of preventative disease, the reference range is lowering. And because we haven't evolved, we're perhaps devolving, this simply reflects a sick society. So to get a testosterone deficiency diagnosis in the modern society, it's very difficult. That doesn't mean that 20, 30 years ago, we all had raging hormones, because as we've said before, you know that your protocol is too aggressive if you have negative outcomes, such as raised hematocrit, raised blood pressure, raised lipid profile, etc., etc. So don't think that they're lowering at a universal rate. No, but they are lowering. So it's very hard for people to get TRT when they need TRT. And as we've said before, it's based on the qualitative symptoms and the quantitative markers. And you need an experienced clinician to advise you whether it's in your best interests. What was the actual point I was going to make about the BSSM guidelines? Less than 12, you are a potential candidate. But the aim of therapy is to get your levels above 15. So surely to make a diagnosis, it should be less than 15. Yes, no. Because obviously there are plenty of people who do not need testosterones of a high, not high, of a reasonable, mm, not reasonable, perhaps borderline level to feel okay. Because as we've known, we're all genetically unique. So it is a dis difficult discussion. But if we're measuring total testosterone in the morning in a peak to see how effective the HPG axis is, why are we looking for total testosterone levels of 15 measuring in a trough when on testosterone replacement therapy, that will obviously be the lowest level. So in between that, your levels will be higher. Is there not an obvious mismatch here? Well, there is, yeah. And we know that there are health benefits from having healthy testosterone levels. But this is not a field of medicine that is particularly sexy to the pharmaceutical industry. Because, funnily enough, if we were all happy, healthy and horny, they wouldn't need their antihypertensive and the type 2 diabe diabetic drugs, would they? It's not good for the old business model. But let's not go down that rabbit hole, because we'd be down there for a long time. Mm. So, the aim of therapy is to do what? It's to reverse the negative symptoms that you've presented with, just realizing that there are numerous causes to low libido, with stress being the massive one that is underappreciated and underrecognized. Why am I not horny? I've got healthy testosterone levels. Because we live in a world full of stress and we need to address that. How are you going to address that? Listen, that's up to you. But breath work, reducing stress through resolving the issues. And if you can't resolve the issues, setting boundaries is super important. What about my fatigue? Well, if I didn't get a good night's sleep last night, I would have been tired. I wouldn't have needed to up my testosterone dose to compensate. So it is a balancing act. And I think that needs to be appreciated because there is a group of people who just go, up the dose, up the dose, till your symptoms resolve. 
not realizing that symptoms are multifactorial. And that is really where the problem lies. Because if you're going to turn around to the doctor and go, I think I need a high testosterone level because my libido is still low. And the doctor goes, well, there's numerous causes to that. So perhaps you should address them. So, well, you are, I am addressing them. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. What about uh, if I'm tired and it's, well, there's multifactorial, it could be your thyroid, it could be all sorts of things. It's the vagueness of these symptoms that causes the problem. Because as doctors, as clinicians, we want quantitative markers, we want definitives. We don't like vague. Vague is ambiguous, funnily enough. So, well, I felt the benefit of TRT. All of my negative symptoms resolved. Well, how do we demonstrate that quantitatively? Well, you do qualitative questionnaires, but they're a bit of a joke, aren't they? Well, my lipid profile improved. How long did it take to improve? Well, it took six months, nine months, 12 months. What else did you do? Well, I addressed my diet, I addressed my sleep, I addressed my stress. I did loads of things. Well, perhaps it was that. See, there's a vagueness to this whole thing, which makes less progressive clinicians uncomfortable and think, well, we can lower your cholesterol by giving you a statin. A statin that lowers cholesterol, which is the precursor to pregnenolone, which then cascades down to testosterone, cortisol and aldosterone, we can demonstrate it lower by two marks through three months of a statin. So surely this is far more effective in treating cardiovascular disease. The path of least resistance, however, with minimal reward. I'll always remember a guy in the buffet loading his plate. And I said, all right, mate, calm down. I said, you're not thinking about heart attack? And he goes, I'm on a statin. So we are designed to take the path of least resistance. But what we should be doing is being given the tools, healthy hormone levels, and the correct advice to optimize our health. Because prevention is what? better than cure. However, we're lazy and we want to cure. Not realising to, to effect a sustainable change to your overall health, overall health, which should be what you're trying to achieve. It's going to take effort. But nobody wants to put effort in, unless you're one of my patients, because I bang on about it all day, every day. And if we make a protocol change, I give you a little carrot. If we up your dose, what you're going to need to do is use that testosterone. Otherwise, you're going to feel some negatives. You're going to feel a heightened sense of anxiety, potentially. And we don't want that, do we? So you sometimes have to give people an incentive. And it, could, it can be positive and it can be negative. It depends on how you respond, really, as into how that challenge is going to be met. So I am a t fan of tough love, as you can probably guess. No effort, no reward. Testosterone replacement therapy, a well-balanced protocol, should mean that the reward can be attained if you put the effort in. What's it all about? I've said it before and I'll say it again. One more time not one more time i'm gonna say it loads because i'm gonna drum this in earn your reward